Welcome to our lecture online. Here in this example, we have the same setup as we did in the previous example with one difference. In the previous example, all the capacitors were the same size. In this example, they're all different size. Two, three, and four microfarads. Only the first one is charged initially with 40 microcoulombs and we're still connecting them in a parallel connection. But now the amount of charge that is distributed over the three capacitors is not going to be the same for each capacitor. It's going to be different because the size of the capacitors are different and they each can hold a different amount of charge. The approach to find the amount of charge at the end on each capacitor is the same as before. Since we have parallel connections, we know that the voltage V1 is going to be equal to V2 is going to be equal to V3. Notice again that the original charge we had on the first capacitor is going to redistribute itself onto the other two capacitors in such a way that you have the positive end of each capacitor connected together and the negative end of each capacitor connected together. Using the definition of capacitance, which is charge divided by the voltage, we can solve this for the voltage. That means it's equal to the ratio of the charge divided by the capacitance, which means we can replace this by Q1 over C1, small Q1 being the final charge on C1, which is equal to Q2 over C2, which is equal to Q3 over C3. Again, small Qs representing the final charge on each of the three capacitors. Since C1, C2, and C3 are not equal to each other, we now must put those values in. So we get Q1 divided by 2 must equal Q2 divided by 3 must equal Q3 divided by 4. And we know that since we have all the positive ends connected to one another, that the total charge on the three capacitors must equal the original charge that we started with. Therefore, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 must equal Q1, large Q1, which is the original charge we had. So Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 must equal the 40 microcoulombs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this here and multiply all three fractions by the lowest common denominator, which in this case is 12. If we do that, we get the following. We get 6Q1 is equal to 4 Q2, which is equal to 3Q3. From this relationship, we can say that since 6Q1 is equal to 3Q3, when I set these two equal to each other, I can therefore say that Q3 is equal to 2Q1. And likewise, when I set those two equal to each other, 6Q1 equals 4Q2 which means that Q2 is equal to 1.5 Q1. Now that I have relationships between Q1 and Q3 and Q1 and Q2, I want to go to this equation right here and plug in the new values for Q2 and Q3. So this gives me Q1 plus Q2, which is 1.5 Q1 plus Q3, which is 2Q1, and that equals 40 microcoulombs. Adding these together, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1.5 is 4.5Q1, is equal to 40 microcoulombs, or Q1 is equal to... Take 40 divided by 4.5, and I get 8.89 microcoulombs. And there's my first result. Now finding Q2, which is simply one and a half times that much. So Q2, which is 1.5 Q1, which is equal to times 1.5 equals 13.33 microcoulombs. And Q3, which is equal to 2 times Q1. So divide by 1.5 times 2, and we get 17.78 microcoulombs. Now, how do we check? In this case, again, since all the positive ends are connected to one another, what we did was simply take the original charge 
and redistribute over the three capacitors. We did not negate any of the charges, which means that the sum of those three should indeed add up to 40. When you add them up, you do find that, yes, that adds up to 40 microcoulombs. So we probably did it correct, and that's how it's done.